How y'all doing? I hope everybody is well and blessed and having a wonderful weekend so far. I'm doing a video today on salvation, regarding salvation. Who do you base your salvation upon? Do you base your salvation upon what Jesus has said in the scriptures? Or do you base your salvation upon what man has told you based upon tradition? Now, it's okay to listen to the word of God from uh, preachers in your church or if you're watching on a network, whatever. Only if it's coming straight from the doctrine, coming straight from God's word and not of opinions. Especially a lot of people are confused about this. And I was too with the once saved, always saved doctrine. Now we know that living in sin, we know that the wages of sin is death. We know that the wages of sin is death. And we go ahead and we deliberately live in sin. I'm not saying like making mistakes as we go along or we have struggles in our walk with the Lord because we know that we're not going to get it right on the first tries or the second tries. It, it varies from person to person in your situation and how God wants to deal with you. Amen. How he wants to mature you in due season. But it, it, this goes for like people who are deliberately living in sin. Now, we know that the Lord does not hear sinners. So to say that, oh yeah, God is still on my side and you living in sin. He does not hear the prayers of sinners. And he calls it, we, we are a sinner if we are living in sin. So if we've been born again, the Bible says that we are made new. We are new uh, creatures in Christ Jesus. Amen. So that means that we lay aside our fleshly desires. We lay aside the things we want to do in this life. And we follow Jesus. Amen. That's what it means to be born again. We lay aside what we want, get into God's word, figure out what it is that he wants to observe his commandments, to pray and fasten to him. Amen. So... There's a difference between growing in Christ and actually living in deliberate, willful sin. And so a lot of people get that confused, like, oh, my salvation, I'm secure. I'm secure until eternity is because they may have people in their ears telling them that you don't have to keep repenting of your sins. You don't even have to live a repentance lifestyle. They will tell you that God understands. God knows your heart. And it was, they'll go, yada, yada, they'll go on and on. The list goes on, y'all. Uh, to give you that doctrine that once saved is always saved. And do I believe that? Absolutely not. I don't believe it because of what the scriptures has taught me and also what Jesus has shown me. So yes, I was baptized in Jesus name and filled with the Holy Ghost when I was 18. But I did not grow in Christ after that. I was not reading or studying his word. I was going out to nightclubs. I was drinking, smoking weed. I was doing my own thing for years and years. And I was baptized in water the right way in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins. So could I truly say that I was born again in that state? I wasn't struggling when I was doing these things. I was deliberately doing them. I knew that doing these, partaking in these events was not Christ-like. I knew that it wasn't right. My conscience, the Lord made it clear in my life that it wasn't right. But yet I still went ahead and did it. So what happened over time is... My conscience became, like the Bible say, says, hot, like a, a, a seared iron. So, I mean, you can't feel nothing no more. You're not sensitive no more to the Holy Spirit. You're not even yielding to the Holy Spirit. You're yielding to your flesh, your desires, and what you want to do. So, was my salvation secure? Even though I was going to church, even though I was baptized in Jesus' name, even though I thought I was born again, even though I made sure I didn't miss a Sunday, I went to Bible uh, study on Wednesdays as well. So was I really secure knowing that I, I was saved, you know, filled with the Holy Ghost and all that, but I'm still willfully, deliberately sinning and doing my own thing. And so, no, the one saved, always say doctrine. No, that makes you feel comfortable in your sin. That puts you in a position to where you, just not humble to the Lord anymore to where you feel like, you know, if I just keep on doing this, it's all good because I'm secure. So that's the mindset of people that believe once saved, always saved. So again, I'm only speaking about if you believe that once saved, always saved, and you live in sin. Okay, because most people that believe in that doctrine are living in sin, or some people could be even struggling, and they may have heard it from somebody that's teaching them. 
you know what you save you secure you don't have to repent you don't have to repent when you um commit fornication you don't have to repent and turn away from lying you ain't got to repent of nothing because jesus did all the work and it's like no you have to endure to the end okay we have to endure to the end this is not a one-time thing yes baptism we have one lord one faith one baptism amen 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 but that does not mean that we could just become um complacent in our walk with christ and just be like you know what I'm saved now. I went down in the water. You know, I'm good. I'm born again. And then you turn right back back into what you was doing as if you're not born again. As if you haven't um, been filled with the Holy Ghost. And maybe some people haven't. But there's supposed to be a complete turnaround at some point in your walk with Christ. As far as like reading the word. Like I said, I wasn't doing any of those things. So how would I know to turn from my sin? If I'm not reading God's word, that doesn't make sense. So, of course, the Lord could give us clues. He could he could chastise us on our walk. But if we're not reading his word, too, how will we know how to live? According to his standards, not our standards, because we can have our own standards. And that's where the confusion was set. And that's where feelings were set in, opinions and we could even take in doctrine from other people very easily. We could be easily manipulated just because we're not reading God's word. And you don't have to be manipulated by other people. You can psych yourself out into believing that I'm on the right track. Once saved, always saved, and that's it. But in reality, we know that that's not true. Because again, it all comes back to what the Bible says, what Jesus teaches us. He cannot hear you. If you, if you don't repent from your heart and you're not changing, he, he will not listen to you. And people always say, God knows my heart. He does. And that should scare you. Yes, he knows your heart. And that should scare you because for the simple fact that if you're trying to duke God, you know, that's a losing game automatically. You can't duke God. You might could con people in this life and lie and play with people. But when it comes to Jesus, you cannot duke him. You can't. Amen. So right now, more than ever, it is time for us to get right with our maker. To stop going based upon, living based upon opinions, living based upon doctrine of, of men and traditions of men and get into God's word and see what he says. To begin to obey his commandments, to make up in our minds and our hearts that, hey, I want to follow Jesus wholeheartedly. I want to stop playing games. I want to stop going in circles in my life. I really want to be serious about the Lord. I want to be blessed by the Lord. Because the Bible says, you know, blessed are they who are not offended by me. That's what the Bible says. So if you're offended by God's word, it says blessed are they who are not offended by me. So if you're offended by God's word, that means you are a curse. If you are offended, not to say that you, that things in the Bible won't, you know, won't hurt your feelings a bit. But if you're offended, you're like, oh, it don't mean that. You know, God don't mean it like that. If you start putting in your own opinions and mixing things up, that's where you're making errors at right there. When you start throwing in your feelings and everything, God doesn't operate like that. And a lot of people will say, well, the times have changed. You know, I could do this now. You know, God could use anybody. And, um, you know, people will say that based upon things that they want to do. If you notice that, a lot of people will say, yeah, God uses anybody. Yes, God could use anybody, but he's not going to use you to go against his commandments. That's just point blank. And no matter how much we try to twist things, how much, you know, the politics change in this world. They're like, oh, yeah, these people got rights. We got the rights. We got God says I change not. So when it comes to those type of things saying God could use and be careful with that, because people could lie and say that God used me for this and that and the third. But. If you read the scriptures, it doesn't align to God's word. So therefore, that's an error right there. You know, God could use me. God, yes, he could use you for his glory, of course. But again, he would not use you to go against his commandments, his laws and his statutes. He changes not. Okay, we can see everything is changing in this life with technology uh, with so many different things, you know, I grew up on VCR 
and, and CD players and all that stuff. That stuff is of the past now. And that was just the 90s. We it's, it's sped up a lot. You know what I'm saying? I grew up to the headphones with the, with the uh, wire getting stuck to my jacket, zipper, all that stuff. Everything has changed now with the smart TVs. Time, yes, I, I agree. Times have changed of the world, though. But the Holy Scriptures have not changed. The Holy Scriptures has been established before you and I were even born or even thought of. And the, the Holy Scriptures will remain the same even after we depart from this earth. Because God is, is eternal. His word is eternal. His word is written. So yes, God changes not. It's in Malachi chapter 3. And people will use, you know, different things, different scriptures to be like, oh, that's out of context. It's out of context. What's so hard with understanding what when God says thou shalt not? Or when he's given characteristics of a certain title like pastors and stuff, people would twist that around too and be like, he didn't mean it like that. Just look at these other women and see what they were doing. And these women were warrior women of God. They were prophetess. They had different assignments. God told them to go warn the people. He gave some very important assignments to women. But yeah, you have people on the other side saying, well, women could preach too. Women could be pastors. Well, how come God gave the characteristics, the uh, characteristics of a pastor? He wrote down the characteristics, you know, the pastors to have one wife and so forth, you know, to be leaders in their homes, you know, to, you know, that, those type of things that men are supposed to do for their for their homes. Amen. And so a lot of people will say that those are twisted out. of So what's out of context about that? Amen. That's just one example, one of many examples. So we're either going to obey God's scriptures or we're not. We're either going to, you know, even struggling with the scriptures. That's a whole different story rather than deliberately disobeying. Like I can understand if we don't, if we're struggling to come to terms with things just because we've seen things in the world. But it's our responsibility to read the scriptures for what it is. And this time took for us to repent of our sins, to turn to Jesus Christ wholeheartedly. There's no time to be playing or messing around or debating God's word or doubting God's word in this hour. It's time to get serious about him. We're either going to be all in or all out. We can't half step with God. Yes, yes, God going to use people to get out the warnings, to get out the messages. But once it's overrides and goes against his his word the scriptures then that's where it's another situation going on there so we have to be very careful with that with the doctrines of of men and traditions and what we see in the world and what we think coexists with each other the world and the scriptures does not coexist with each other the ways of the world and the scriptures does not coexist with each other amen god is is much bigger than all of this he's bigger than politics he's bigger than uh, votes and everything. So we have to take that to account. We either going to obey what Jesus says in the scriptures or we not. Again, the scriptures have been here before you and I were here or even thought of, and they will be here after we depart. So that's all I want to share on today was salvation. And I hope you guys have a blessed and wonderful rest of the weekend. Take care.